Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. So last episode we done a little live stream where we made quite a lot of progress through Abyssal Craft as you can see there, which we'll go over in a second. Thank you if you were able to tune into the live stream yesterday, I had a lot of fun doing that. But if you didn't catch the stream, we're going to go quickly over what's changed. First of all, we added a new powered spawner here. This new spawner is for the shadow beasts that spawn from Abyssal Craft as you can see there. And we need these guys to farm the shadow gems. We first of all used the shadow gems to get our book, and they're also used in Shards of Oblivion, and a couple of other crafts down the line as well. But to get the Shards of Oblivion, we needed this Transmutation Gem, which is crafted in the Necronomicon Ritual, which is what these two setups over here are for. This first one will charge up the Necronomicon using these statues. It basically throws the energy into the book, and this is what we need for our crafting. As you can see on the recipe for the gem, it does require 1500 PE, which is uh, Abyssal Craft's energy version. And so the input items go on these pedestals, and then we're able to craft with this thing. To craft these gems though, we need Empowered Inori and Empowered Palis, which we were previously not automating before. So during the stream, we added two more Empowerer setups for both of those items. To achieve passive automation of this though, we also set up some more compactors for gears, and also added passive prismarine production through the atomic reconstructor. So having a look at the quest book here, we managed to progress a little bit down the right hand side of these abyssal craft quests. It did also involve getting into some extended crafting here. These uh, tables are not quite automated yet, we're just still doing things manually. But to craft the tables themselves, we need a lot of crafting tables, so we added this crafter to passively craft those crafting tables. And these are also used in things like molecular assemblers, so they're going to be useful to just have on stock here. Also, at the end of the stream, we crafted up the wireless terminal here. Uh, this thing at this point is pretty easy to craft. We don't quite have access to the wireless crafting terminal though yet. But I did make a few wireless access points. The first one is over here. The second one is next to ore processing here. And each of these have about a 50 meter radius. And the third one is just next to our cows here, next to the farm. Alright, so now let's look into the next stages of Abyssal Craft progression. Which is to upgrade our basic tier Necronomicon into the Abyssal Wasteland Necronomicon. And to do that, we have to visit this abyssal wasteland dimension. To upgrade the book though, we need to kill some of these mobs with our staff. This should give the staff some charge, so as you can see here in the abyssal wasteland energy, we're at 36. But this shouldn't take too long, especially since we have some enchants on this wand. So yeah, once we reach 100, we get this abyssal wasteland essence, which we can then craft with some of the flesh that the, those guys also drop into the skin of the abyssal wasteland. And once we craft the skin and some Corallium plates and also bricks, we can make our Abyssal Wasteland Necronomicon. And actually, we're going to make two of these things, just so that we can have one crafting and one to charge. We can also pick up the quest for Corallium Stone, which I have auto crafting here in our AE system. The next thing we need is Corallium Bricks, which is just various smelting and crafting recipes from the Abyssal Stone that we find in the Wasteland. The next quest here wants us to upgrade our pedestals and relays. The relays we're not actually using yet, so I don't know. Let's just do this for the quest. We get some thunder, and we have our upgrades. And same thing with the relay, and also this energy pedestal. And in fact, we can even take it one step further now that we've been to the Abyssal Wastelands. This just takes some of the Corallium ingots, some of these gem clusters, which, by the way, we're getting from our quantum quarry over here. All of those gem clusters come from Corallium Ore, which we're just sending through our enrichment chamber there. And we seem to need a lot of that stuff, so I'm really glad you guys mentioned that we should add it to the filter on the quantum quarry there. So, same thing once again, we can take them up one more tier. Or maybe not. It looks like we have to do this inside the Abyssal Wasteland dimension. And since there's so many mobs in this dimension, I <laughs> built a little platform up here for us. So we just have to place some cobblestone. Right click with the Abyssal Nomicon. Oh, maybe we need a regular Necronomicon. Let me try that. It turns out we were trying with the wrong cobblestone. I think it has to be this Abyssal Cobblestone while we're in the Abyssal Wastelands. And now we can do the upgrades. And I purposely upgraded our Energy Pedestal first, as to upgrade any more of these components, we need to let our books charge. And each of these other upgrades that we need for the quest takes 2400 PE. But since the other book only has 1400, we have got a bit of waiting to do while this thing charges up. So there is the relay, and we just have enough PE to do the energy collector. Alright, so at this point I believe we now have to gain access to the other two or maybe three Abyssal Craft dimensions. And to do that we have to basically keep going through the tiers of Abyssal Craft, so we need the next tier of key for the dimension, which I think is over here. First thing we have to do though is find an Abyssal Stronghold. 
And for some reason we need one of these refined Corallium pickaxes. I assume it's to mine something in the stronghold, so we'll get one of those for the quest. And before we go we can also upgrade our staff of Rendon here to the next tier. And I think the next tier is going to allow us to get the next tier of essences, which we're going to need for the next uh, dimensions in Abyssal Craft. And to find the stronghold we need some of these power stone trackers, which is basically like the Eyes of Ender from Vanilla. So I went back to the Dreadlands, used up the eyes to find the stronghold, and the Augment spell is actually a really good spell for finding this thing, similar to the Vanilla version. Then we have to mine up this power stone, which we'll need later on. The next component we need for the quest is the Eye of Asora, so we need to perform this ritual to summon this guy. Alright, so I think we're ready to start the ritual. We've got our two tanks of Corallium, the pristine transmutation gem, and we have our little sacrificial lamb over here. <laughs> we also need 10,000 PE for this, and I think we're ready to spawn this guy. Grab the sheep, keep him alive. <laughs> so I don't know where this guy's gonna spawn. Uh, oh, it's a dragon. Asora the Fallen. Oh, this isn't much of a fight. He is tanky, but I mean... <laughs> Not very deadly, is he? Oh, there's more dragons. And after about two minutes of right click, <laughs> we have defeated Asora. Oh, lots of drops here, lots of drops. So according to the quests here, this guy should have dropped his eye. But I have a feeling one of these mobs is holding it. <laughs> but which one? I have no idea. One of them must have the eye. Oh, there it is. That guy in the front has it. We need this eye. There we go. <laughs> so now we're going to use the power stone that we mined up from the stronghold and combine that with some more Eden chunks which I went back to farm from the Eden. Some more shards of oblivion and the eye of the abyss. And these blocks apparently are used for a portal to the next divine RPG dimension which we can light with our twilight clock. I didn't expect to <laughs> go into another divine RPG dimension. I thought we were going to be going to more abyssal craft but uh, I guess we're just going to follow the quest here. So let's see what uh, the Wildwood, I think this is what it's called, yeah. Let's see what the Wildwood has for us. I can't tell if this hasn't generated yet or if we actually are <laughs> in the air here. Interesting spawn. Let's mark the portal again. All right, so there's two quests open up here for us. We need to find Wildwood Chunks, which I think is just the same version of the Eden. I assume these drop from the wildlife that's here. And we also need to find the Flown Island Dungeon in the Wildwood. Yeah, it looks like we've got more bosses to fight. All right. Oh, is this the dungeon entrance? Hmm. Hello there. <laughs> oh yeah, these guys drop the soul, which I think, yeah, we can turn those into the fragments. And we need about a billion of these things for the chunks. I have a feeling I'm going to be holding right click for a while. These guys are, uh, once again, very tanky. And also loud. And there must be a spawner here, but I've taken a look inside and I don't see any spawners here. Yeah, I mean, look at them all. <laughs> Another button here. I'm not sure what these do. They must open something. Oh, so upon reading the quest again, we have to mirror this structure in this other room over here. But this is actually a different dungeon, as in the previous one I did break this structure, so <laughs> I would have no clue how it went. Okay, let's just keep those guys outside. <laughs> There's so many of these mobs in here. Have a go at building this structure at least. I don't think we can break this glass, so it's not going to be easy to try and mirror it over here. Is it like this, maybe? I think I've got the structure built. Let's see if this works. Okay, the button did nothing. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Oh, something worked. Let me through, please. Please. Oh, those are some nice rewards. This is a new room. We got some levers, and it looks like this is some sort of puzzle. All right, so how, how do we open the next section? Find a certain number, number of digits scattered throughout the dungeon and enter them into the lever puzzle. Okay, so we have to go back through the dungeon and find some find some numbers. I haven't seen any numbers yet. Oh, there's one. So number four, I think this will match up with the levers here. Hmm, not seeing these other numbers anywhere. Oh, found another one. Here's number six. Let's try number six. Okay, there must be more. You think this is intended? <laughs> Look at all of these guys. I, I can't move in here. I can't see anything. <laughs> oh, found another number. It's right here at the entrance here. So we have number two. I don't know if that's the last one though. Hopefully, because <laughs> I don't see any more numbers. Let's go enter the lever if we can get past all of these guys. Oh, looks like this is the boss room. Okay, okay. 
And let's clear this out first of all. Alright, let's see what the boss has got for us. Oh, is he just going to run at us? <laughs> is this going to be it? Oh, you got his golem to help him. Oh, that was a lot of damage there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, that was a close fight. I may have spoke too soon. <laughs> Alright, let's finish this guy off. Aha, there's the Feather of the Wildwoods that we were after for our quest. Now we just need a bunch of these Wildwood chunks. Which I'm guessing we may actually have already. We picked up a lot of those souls from all those guys in that dungeon. Some quite decent loot from that dungeon as well. We got some atomic alloy and some of these advanced circuits, which aren't really the easiest things to craft. But we're going to craft down all the wildwood souls. Get lots of these fragments, which we can turn into the wildwood chunks. To progress any further and get the key for the next ab abyssal craft dimension, we need the heart, which we can get from the termosect, which we can spawn with our wildwood chunks somewhere. Oh, there he is. <laughs> He's a lot bigger than what I expected. And so now we can use the feathers, the two hearts we just collected, some steam and restonia, to upgrade our gateway key. Aha! And this key we can use to access a separate abyssal craft dimension while we're in the wastelands. And I think this, yeah, we should get another portal from this thing. Which takes us to the dreadlands. And so here we also have to collect the essence with our wand. And we've got quite a few of these guys to take out before we can get enough essence. And we'll also need to farm a bunch of these dread guards, which are not very nice, they <laughs> set you on fire. But these guys drop the shards of abyssal knight, and we're going to need this a little bit later to progress. But for now, collecting more essence. Oh, check these guys out. <laughs> these guys are very scary looking. So I was counting out how many shards of abyssal knight we need, and it turns out we need a full stack of this stuff. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to be in here a little while. I have to say though, Abyssal Craft probably has some of the best looking mobs in the game. Alright, so after farming who knows how many of those guys, <laughs> we need to turn those shards that they drop into ingots. And to do that we need to transmute them. Which means we have to go back for this little quest over here, which means making the transmutator. Oh man, that is a lot of Coralium tanks. Uh, <laughs> we're going to need another transmutation gem, and probably another active ender core as well. What's this? Blocks of refined Coralium? Well, getting the tanks is a bit tedious, but it's not too bad. We have infinite of this fluid in this dimension. And we can easily make another transmutation gem. Alright, so I've been trying to gather up the materials for this transmutator craft. The things we're missing is four more blocks of this refined Coralium. And check out the recipe for these things. <laughs> it's actually a lot more crazy than I first thought. So we make these ingots 2 to 1 from smelting chunks of Coralium, but this recipe is 48 Abyssal Stone, 8 Ender Alloy Basic Tier, and 9 Coralium Gem Clusters. And these clusters are 9 of these Coralium Gems each, and we only get 1 gem per ore. Actually we get 2, but <laughs> it's still a 9 per gem that we need, and then that gives us 2 ingots for every chunk. So to get the rest of the blocks we need for the craft, we need another 35 of these ingots. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we're missing 27 of these clusters, which means we have to do something about our Coralium. And while we're getting it from our Quantum Quarry over there, it's not really going to be fast enough. I mean, that thing's going to take forever, because that's, that's also mining other ores as well. But while I was gathering those materials, we have a bigger problem, actually, a, a very, very big problem. <laughs> Look at our steel ingots. We have zero. And the reason for that is, a couple of minutes ago I came over here, and this infused slot for the enriched iron was filled with redstone, which was no good. <laughs> I forgot to put a filter on this thing. So, all the steel we're getting is currently, I think, going to the rest of the alloys that we're producing. There's a lot of it being made for the steel gears, which is used in uh, the empowder setups, actually. There's probably uh, quite a lot being used for dark steel, which probably means we should upgrade the smelter. To upgrade the machines, though, we need steel. <laughs> So it's a bit of a catch-22. Um, let's maybe just come back to the steel issue. Well, there's also glowstone here we, we're missing. Uh, let's come back to the steel issue, but first we need to tackle Coralium. So to try to fix the Coralium, we're going to make another builder. Oh, we need steel. <laughs> of course we need steel. Alright, we managed to get enough steel for the builder. As for the shape card for the builder, we're actually going to make this a fortune quarry. One, because we need it for the quest, and two, it will also skip our ore processing over there, which means we'll get Coralium a little bit faster. 
So this builder we're going to set up in the Abyssal Wastelands. We're also going to make use of our Ender Chests. We still have to craft some more of these for the other setups. But we already have this crafted and we don't have another Dimensional Transceiver. So, And this quarry we're going to whitelist only for Abyssal Coralium Ore. Which again will speed up the process and it means we also don't pay for the power costs on all the other blocks here. I do. Th I think there is iron and also copper and stuff that spawns in this dimension. But uh, yeah, we have other ways of getting that stuff. So we just have to configure our dimensions here for this thing. I think all of the filters are set here. We just have to give this a redstone signal. And hopefully we're going to start getting Coralium ore. Or wait a sec. Yeah, we put in fortune. We're going to get gems instead. That's right. Now we just have to hook up the ender chest to this set of drawers here, which holds our Coralium. Yeah, there it is there in this compacting drawer. So we can just put an item conduit here to extract from this thing. There, and hopefully in relatively short order we'll have enough Coralium to progress here. So while we're waiting on that thing, let's address this little steel issue. It looks like by now we do have some backlogged, so it must have used uh, the rest in all the rest of the buffers. So with this little bit that we have, let's upgrade our steel production. So for that we'll need two infusion factories, and we'll also upgrade the furnace here. Oh, and I guess we'll also need another enriching factory. Yeah, so we've upgraded all of our steel production machines to the factory variants, which can hold, handle three at a time. You just have to remember to take the upgrades out of the old ones. Oh yeah, now we're making steel. <laughs> this should catch up to the backlog in no time. Yeah, we're up to nine stacks by now. So I'm curious, can we order the, the other 35 ingots that we need for this Coralium? Oh, we can. Wow, that was that was extremely quick That after we set up the builder. All right, well, let's just request this and... Uh, Hopefully finish out this chapter, we've only got a couple of quests left to do here. Aha, yes, <laughs> we finally have our transmutator. So with this thing we can use any burnable fuel, and we're going to turn these dreaded shards of abyssal night into the ingot versions. Which we then need to craft with dread cloth, which takes industrial leather and some string, and then these dread fragments that all the zombies in there drop. We can just put a recipe in for AE2 to do this for us. And we need four of these things, I think. Yeah, that's not too bad. So the point of these ingots and also this cloth is to get dreadium plates and we need four of these dreadium plates along with the skin of the dreadlands which we combine with the essence and this will let us upgrade our necronomicon and I was going to make two of these things but each dreadium plate takes eight ingots each <laughs> and we only get these one to one uh, transmuting these shards so I think we'll just stick with the one necronomicon for now and we'll leave the other one at abyssal wasteland tier. So with this new book we now have access to create our ritual inside the dreadlands and the first thing we're going to do with this ritual is upgrade our staff once again. We get some lightning and we have our upgrade again. And we even keep our enchantments on the staff which is excellent. Alright so that brings us on to the last quest in this chapter. There is also this uh, dank null docking station and we're going to skip over this for now. So we have to craft this dread crystal. To make this crystal though we need four blocks of dreadium which is uh, a lot of dreadium ingots <laughs> and this is a lot of shards of abyssal night. I'm not sure if there's any easier way to get this stuff. If not it means farming a lot of these dread guards and <laughs> that is a very tedious thing to do especially since they set you on fire. We could maybe set up a powered spawner for these guys but I think I'm actually just gonna throw looting on a sword and hopefully this will help speed it up a bit. I'm not sure if the drop we're after is actually affected by looting, but if I remember correctly we can actually have our laser gun in the offhand and uh, the sword with looting in the main hand and I think it should apply loot the looting effect, even if we don't last hit him with this sword. Luckily these greater dread spawns also drop the shards that we're after, which are a bit easier to deal with. <laughs> so after a bunch of farming in the dreadlands <laughs> we can make our four blocks of dreadium. And the other thing we need for the catalyst is another one of these oblivion catalysts, which is four melodic capacitors and some more of these shards. And this craft also does require a sacrifice, so we, we have to get our little sheep back here. And 5000 PE. And then with the catalyst and 20,000 PE inside the dreadlands. Hold on, let me just double check we don't need a sacrifice here. No, we can make our dread crystal. Nice, so with the Dread Crystal we have two options according to the quests. We can either use it to craft one of these digital miners, which is basically one of the another quarry, or we could go into chapter 15, which is into blood magic. Oh, and I guess also Evil Craft, which is a mod I've never actually played with here. 
But each of the items to open up both of these quests requires one of these dread crystals. And I don't think this has a durability on it. I think this is a one-time craft. So either way, we're going to need more dread crystals. And from what it seems, we also need multiple blood altars. Although, I think we'll just start with the one. <laughs> uh, these are not the cheapest things to craft in this pack. Hold on, what is this? Empowered Void? Okay, yeah, we can do Empowered Void. Blocks of Dredium, blocks of Refined Coralium. How do we make the Gargantuan Drum? Okay, some Demon Metal, Steam and Restonia. The reinforced one we've made before, but we need two Klein Balls, which is... Oh, okay. Yeah, we can do this stuff. It's going to take a bit of uh, crafting and gathering since not everything is fully all made. But I think we're going to use our first Dread Crystal to get into Blood Magic. So let's just see how far away we are from this Blood Altar. We can use the little trick from AE2 by hooking up an interface just to a storage crate here. And since this is an extended craft, we'll have to put in manually the input items. So we need 7 Empowered Void. Uh, we'll take out the Dread Crystal. 6 Refined Coralium. The Demonically Gargantuan Drum. And I think that's everything. Or some Dark Stone at the bottom. Yeah, so if we encode this recipe. And then put it in this interface here. We can let Applied Energistics tell us how far away we are from this thing. Uh, we are still missing a couple of recipes though. Let me put in the recipe for this gargantuan drum. Oh yeah, now we can see what exactly what we're missing here. So we need another couple of pieces of cobblestone, that's no problem. Uh, some empowered void. This is, I think, the only empowered material we don't have automated yet. Some ender alloy. We do have this on passive. But there is a couple of times where we don't have a big enough buffer, so let's just increase this from 1 to 4 stacks that this drawer is going to hold. As for these ender crystals though, we really should look into automating these with the empowered spawner. But you know what, let's actually capture some bats. This is so that we can make our flight control units. Hopefully for one of the last times though, as we, once we get some powered spawners, we can automate this process. And we'll also have to, once again, grab some more endermen. Well, before we automate the spawners, let's first of all craft some more empowered void crystals. So, can we at least request one of these spawners? Oh, the sun crystals. This is the NBT data issue. Yeah, we should really get around to automating these things so that they're all uh, consistent items. All right, I fixed the NBT data issue. Now we can request our the next powered spawner. We're going to want more than one of these things. I think we'll need one for bats and also endermen at least, and possibly witches. We need the endermen for the ender crystals, and the bats are going to be for the flight control units. I think the uh, witches we will need later on, as those are used for sentient enders. Oh, and I guess we'll also need one for zombies. Yeah, there's a lot more of these than I actually thought. Uh, maybe in between episodes, I'll gather the rest of the materials for the powered spawners. But let's try and get the Enderman at one, at least today. Maybe we'll place these right about... Oh, yeah, of course. We first have to make it the Enderman spawner. So maybe we'll place them something like this, and we'll have them in like a 3 by 3 sort of pattern. We are also going to need an ME connection over here somewhere. So I think there's also there's a main line coming from here that we can put a P2P on, and we'll have to link this channel. And then we can put an interface on the back of the spawner, and we'll set the IO on this thing to input and output from the back. And we also want this on capture mode. And what capture mode will do is, when we supply this with soul vials, it will fill them with the Enderman. We'll also need a capacitor for this, may as well give it melodic. And I guess we'll also need power over here. Uh, we could run a, a line from there, but I mean, <laughs> it's easier just to add a power cell. Yeah, let's just request a power cell here. And we can just place it right about here. We'll conduit facade the front here. And now we're getting some power. So, now we can put in a processing pattern for these Enderman soul vials. So we'll want to say the output is the Enderman soul vial. And the input is going to be an empty one. And this is going to go into the powered spawner interface. And now we should be able to request Enderman soul vials. Aha, nice. And now we can add another recipe for these Ender crystals with uh, some vibrant crystals. We'll take out the empty soul vial from the output of this recipe though. And this one is going to go into the soul binder. We can actually take out this flight control unit because this one doesn't work with the, the bats since they're not all of the same NBT data. So we'll have to add the powered spawner for that. And when we do, we'll input that recipe back in. But yeah, these ender crystals are mostly used in the weather crystals, which we can use for our dimensional transceivers and make more ender chests this way. And we also use these to make more powered spawners, which is part of the reason why I done endermen first. And then of course, we also need these for the teleportation cores which is used for the Klein Bottles, and this is in our Gargantuan Drum for our Blood Altar here. So I think the Void Crystal should be finished by now. I also grabbed more Abyssal Cobblestone. Can we request our Blood Altar now? Oh, we can! Awesome! Nice! Alright, so I don't think we'll get to use it today, but crafting this thing is a big deal. <laughs> 
And it's also not the last one, no craft either. But yeah, as you can see here, it's crafting the soul vial with the powered spawner we just put down. And actually, this thing's going pretty quick. The longest thing is probably the, all of the stone, which has to go through our furnace. Which at this point could probably do with an upgrade. I think we're still using the factory variant. Yeah, so we can take this up one more tier to speed this up. But eventually, the ME system will put in all of the items into this crate here. Where we can craft our first blood magic blood altar. Nice. <laughs> and we even get the trophy for it. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to playing with blood magic in this pack, actually. But I think we'll save that for another episode. So yeah, I think we'll wrap things up here. In between episodes, I guess I'll uh, add the rest of the powered spawners here. And just on a quick side note, there won't be any episode tomorrow, as uh, I'm going to visit some family, so yeah, it'll be the first day off since I started this pack. So the automation will be on pause for one day, but, <laughs> but don't worry, we'll be back the next day. Videos will resume on Wednesday as normal. So thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all on Wednesday for some more Divine Journey 2.